All right, my man, state your name and let them know you're on Nicovelli TV. Uh, name is Santos Negron. I thank you for being on Nicovelli TV. Um, I'm Nick here. fan? I'm a, definitely a Nick fan, a, a raised and born in New York, East Harlem. I'm actually a founding coach of the Puerto Rican Pro Legends. I, uh, one of my mentors is an actual Harlem legend, uh, legendary. His name is Bob McCullough. Now, who uh, Bob McCullough worked with? Bob McCullough was a... Uh, uh, his mentor was Holcomb Rucker, who took Bob McCullough under, under his wings. And Camping. Joe Hammond as well? And Joe Hammond was under, uh, was like a, I would say a, a prodigy. And he played in the pro Rucker legend where he made the, his rep and Bob McCullough was the commissioner in running that tournament. So they have a bond like, fa like father and son, mad respect for both of them. Okay. Uh, both of them, but uh, the whole history is that the Knicks are a great team. We just got to figure out what we got to do with them as a strategy and stay with it. Who's your favorite player on the Knicks? Overall? Overall, overall from from 71? Well, I got I got uh, Walt Frazier first, and then, and, and then I got uh, Barnett is my second. It's Barnett? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm old school. I'm, I'm going old it's school. It's all good. What, is, what you like about uh, Clyde Frazier? Clyde just was a... Was a Two-dimensional. He played a serious D and he played serious offense. When the time came to 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 come through in the clutch, he was one of the big ones. That, that as a matter of fact, when the Knicks won the MVP, uh, the championship, when uh, knee blew out his knee, the final game. Uh, Talking about Willis Reed. Yeah, the the final game. I mean, Walt Frazier had a phenomenal game. Everybody looked at the stats. He had like 38 points. Uh, brought the team into victory. But everybody focused on Willis, which was. Uh, uh, understanding and also a aspirational for him to, to play the way he did. So, you know, at, at, at the end of the day, the chip was divided among everybody. But if you, from my viewpoint, personally, I saw him you know, Frazier. Well, Frazier, right? Frazier. Now, I see you got the number six, man. That's I your boy, Chris Mazingas. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, yeah, I got this thought of that. That this young boy was gonna do us uh, be a franchise player, but uh, he had other aspirations. He didn't feel the management was what he felt was doing what he thought was right. So, what you upset by that? Nah, because you know, it's just, I, I'm old school, so I know what a new NBA is all about. It's all about money, man. It's all about catering to the play instead of playing catering to the game. So, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it's a different style, it's a different philosophy. There's no loyalty to a team no more. You know, everybody go for the money, and that's how that works. So, are you a big fan of Kyrie and um, Kevin Durant possibly coming to the city of New York? Well, definitely uh, uh, Kyrie, because he's a Jersey boy, but his father's from the. It's, it's, it's from, from New York. Uh, yeah. Call him, right? But uh, Kevin will definitely be a player. I mean, he loves it. I think we embraced him enough. I love him. We've shown him enough love. Even when he went to the Rucker game that one day and scored like 48 points. Uh, he saw the love that we have for him, so it's up to him to make his choice where he wants to go. Actually. Yeah, yeah. You mean Kyrie or Kevin no, Durant? I think Kevin Durant. Actually, he scored 66. All right, but I only saw a little bit of that. Oh, 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 you bound. Yeah, 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 yeah. He got business some more. Right. Now, Mitchell Robinson. When I mention Mitchell Robinson, what come to mind? He's a young, a lot of potential upside, but it's also uh, a lot where I, what I didn't like was they, uh, they had a chance to do a little damage this year, but they they thought that his playing time superseded Cantor and everybody else who was trying to play center that year this year to try to win the game. Um, and that's the coach's decision. I mean, I think Mitch has a big upside, but it's going to take a couple of years. You know, like they say, any center in the NBA takes him three to four years to develop fully to the max. With him, it might take a little, just a slightly little longer because he's... He, you know, he started. But he's already doing the goddamn thing. He well, well, averaged three blocks things. per game, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, we can highlight all his positives, all right? But there's a lot of uh, uh, other side of him that he's got to pick up and everything. Like what? Defensive instincts and ability to jump and time the ball. Right? That's natural. That comes natural. That's something that no one can teach him. He has mm -hmm. that. But the other part of the game, the knowledge of keeping the ball in, uh, not getting too upset, and he's learning all that. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He do get in foul trouble. You know, he's learning Absolutely. all that, and that's part of the game. But at the end of the day, he's got to play within the framework of the team, whatever it is. Now, you talked about development yeah. and being patient with developing players. So that means you have a little bit sympathetic towards Frank Nilekina? Frank Nilekina is in his what? I think, Third I, year. Think, I, I think what's the, the barrier with him is that he played European ball. And he's coming to the city of gods. This is a city of gods. 
So we real critical about our gods because we grew up with gods. We know what gods are about. We know the type of gods New York is like to see. Is he that type of god? No. He's fundamentally sound, smart young kid. Does he have the swagger that most New York players got? But no, definitely not. But he's learning. He, I mean, he's a good six-man defensive player. Uh, would I have made him my first draft pick? Nah, I would have made him in my second or third round, but I wouldn't let So, so, so you, you feel that we should have had Dennis Smith Jr. from the gate? Well, we had other potentials to get a lot of the guys. Dennis was a knee, but, but but back then, even now, we still got a lot of needs. You know what I mean? It's up to what's more important. For and last but not least, how do you feel about the draft pick? Being at the Knicks came third and not number one, they get the opportunity to snatch up Zion Williams. Well, here's what I'm saying, that living in New York all my life, I know how the media hypes us up. Right. And when we start believing that we're going to get a draft one. But what we forget is it's, it's quarter lottery. Ain't no with nothing guaranteed. I mean, we took, we got third. We, we love, everybody would have loved first. We got third. So we got a good piece. Remember, they said in this draft, the first three pieces are the most valuable impact players. The rest are going to be good pieces for the team. But at the end of the day, it's up to what the Knicks want. Do they want J.R. Barry, who father played for St. John, and, uh, and, and, and he brought him every summer down here to play New York ball so he could be tough and swagger, which is what he has when he was able to do. Right. But there's a lot of other players, but there's a lot of other needs that the Knicks need. So it depends on what they're addressing, what they drive, or what their free agency look like, because that's going to fill a lot of the void. And last but not least, let's say we would have had an opportunity to get Zion Williams. Some were saying trade him for Anthony Davis. Were you a fan of that? I look at it like this. I got an established center that everybody's trying to get. I got a young potential phenom. But at the end of the day, he's still a forward. All right? Okay. I got a center. I got a 6'11 center that can change the whole development. I, Me personally, I would take a AD because of the way he would change. Not saying that Zion is, but Zion has to prove himself to me first. He's phenomenally hype. He's going to be a gifted player in the NBA. But is he going to be an all-star? Is he going to be a great star? I don't know. You know, his game got to develop. He's phenomenally strong. On the, on the open court, he's going to be great. Right. But when that half court the offense and defense pounding and all that come, you're going to be playing guys just as big and just as strong as him. So that's where I want to see how he reacts to that. When the competition is, he ain't moving nobody no more. Right. You know what I mean? He ain't getting the free lane to go in because everybody's afraid of the, the front. Ain't going to be like that in the end. All right. And a nail in the coffin. I promise. This is it. Yeah. Carmelo Anthony. Are you Team Mellow for him coming back or Team Hell No? We don't want Team always. Team Mellow? Got to give respect to my brother Team Mellow. All right. And All that's right. what it is, All man. because he's done a lot of community work here and there. Not just because of his game, because I think he's a phenomenal shooter. He's been put in different roles. He's bad management. Also, he has to understand that his his uh, game or role has, has to change drastically because he's not no longer that young kid. Still a great shooter. Streaky shooter. He's still a great shooter. And, you know, he's a war equal. I got to look out for my brother. All right, and that's what it is, man. As y'all can see, the OGs is busting the interviews out, man. The OGs, man. They don't forget about the fundamental sport we call basketball. And with that being said, I want to thank you for coming on my channel on Nicovelli TV. For all my viewers, y'all make sure y'all like and subscribe if y'all haven't already. And we out. Peace. Peace.